Today, we're going to talk about one of the best remedies you can do for dry, wrinkly hands. Now, especially in the winter when it's dry out and you don't have enough vitamin D, your hands can get extremely dry. But there's a lot more to this, and there's some great things you can do to resolve this problem. And for those of you that are wondering if I'm growing a beard, yes, I am starting to grow a beard. I'm going to try it out and see what happens. Now, when people start putting all sorts of lotions on their hands, they don't realize that everything you put on your hand doesn't just disappear, it doesn't evaporate. It gets sucked into the pores, goes into the bloodstream, and goes right to your liver. So you really want to make sure that what you're putting on your skin is safe. 22% of all uh, personal care products are petroleum-based, which includes solvents like benzene. It includes mineral oil, which, by the way, will pull out a lot of the key fat-soluble vitamins like vitamin A, D, E, and vitamin K, leaving your hands very dehydrated, dry, red, cracking, and even itchy. Then we have the chemicals in tap water. I mean, you have fluoride, chlorine, which are very, very harsh uh, on your skin, not just your hands, but your face, your entire body when you take a shower. Really good idea to get a shower filter, but our skin is constantly bombarded by all sorts of chemicals and things that uh, make us look older. Now, if we compound that by our current situation where people have to wash their hands 20 times a day, you can imagine uh, what this does to the hands. Now, I'm going to be totally upfront. I'm not against washing your hands. I think you should definitely be washing your hands to decrease the spread of viruses. I wash my hands very frequently, so I'm not against that. However, if you find that your hands are completely dried out, red, itchy, cracking, looking scaly and old, there's some important things you can do other than just going down to the local drugstore and getting some lotion and putting it on your hands and then finding out that, wow, within five minutes, it's right back to being dry again. What you have to be aware of is that there are thousands of different types of species or microbes, friendly microbes living on your hands and all around your body. And yes, you can call them germs, but they're friendly germs, okay? You also have friendly funguses, about 14 different funguses that are living on your hands. Now, what's interesting is they've done different assessments on this microbiome living on the surface of our skin, and they isolated different types of microbes in different places. And I found it interesting that the area of the body that had the most diversified fungal species is actually on your heels. Fascinating. But on your hands, you have about 14 different types of funguses. And these are friendly. We call this microbe relationship um, a symbiotic relationship. Uh, symbiotic means working together, having some mutual benefits back and forth. The microbes protect us. We give them a home to live. Then you have all these different types of microbes that have a symbiotic relationship with each other. So they have to learn to live together, right? I mean, I wish we as a human race could actually be more symbiotic. Um, some people just have a very difficult time tolerating differences, different cultures, different viewpoints, and different beliefs. So in order to have a symbiotic relationship, we have to have a lot of tolerance of differences. And you need to have the awareness that these so-called germs are not harmful. And we don't necessarily have to have this anti germ or microbe um, viewpoint because we can't even exist without these microbes. They actually help our survival. They make vitamins, they give us immune protection, and without them being on your hands, the pathogens, the, the bad microbes, start to develop and they create a lot of problems. And there's also another interesting thing. You can have non-pathogenic microbes and change the environment like make the environment more stressful and have those non-pathogenic microbes turn into pathogens. So just a change of environment will alter the type of microbes that are living on your body. Apparently when you stress them out, some of them go a little bit crazy. So it's very, very important to have a good environment, a healthy environment for your microbes to live and not continually stress them out. And this is why when we get to the remedy, there's a couple things that you'll add to the skin that will make a huge difference in having these microbes start thriving.
Now, the other thing I want to bring up is the pH of your skin. It's not alkaline. It's acidic. It's between 4 and 4.5. So that's actually pretty acid. And if the pH goes too high, becomes more alkaline, all sorts of things happen. Your skin starts to swell. It can become inflamed. So you really need to understand what you put on your body so you don't put the wrong thing and end up creating a problem. Now, I do want to mention one other thing, and this is what I try to educate people on over and over and over. Your external skin, the way you look, your hair, your nails, are a reflection of what's going on inside, what you eat, what you avoid, what you do to your body to keep it healthy. So what I show you for a remedy will help you, but you really need to focus also on your diet internally. And so every part of your body externally can look youthful. And yes, I'm talking about lowering your carbohydrates and doing intermittent fasting. Two very powerful things that will slow down the oxidation or the rusting out of your tissues. Because it's the sugar, the refined flour products, like in grains, as well as the so-called vegetable oils, which like the soy canola oil that is in so many of our foods that just makes our skin, especially age at a very fast rate. So there's two um, main goals. Uh, for the hands. Okay. Number one, we want to, of course, avoid things that are making them dry and older. So in other words, if you're using lotions that have petroleum based products, you know, just don't use those anymore. And as a side note, um, I have a greenhouse. And so I'm working with soil all day long. I learned very, very quickly that you must wear gloves, because if you dig your hands into soil with all the clays and all the different um, minerals and the microbes living in the soil, boy, you can dry out your hands so fast. So you have to wear gloves if you're working with soil or if you're working with pottery or you're being exposed to different chemicals at work. Uh, I know of one gentleman that was working with solvents and uh, these solvents just pulled out all the vitamin E from his hands and they were literally red, cracking, blistery, and so any type of petroleum-based mineral oil solvents um, pull out all these fat-soluble vitamins. And so you better put it back in. And so the two main goals I would recommend is number one, put back into your hands these fat-soluble vitamins, vitamin A, D, E, and vitamin K. And number two, recognize that you have these friendly microbes living on your skin. They're symbiotic and don't try to kill them continually without allowing them to be reestablished. So it's very, very important between the constant washing of the hands and uh, exposure to the chemicals that you allow the hands to reestablish their microbes and even nourish the microbes with what I'm gonna show you next. So here's the remedy. It's gonna be a blend of just three simple ingredients, okay? One is you're gonna use egg yolks, okay? You're not gonna put the white of the egg, you're gonna use one egg yolk, put a little bowl. What's so special about an egg yolk? An egg yolk is an embryo and it contains all of the fat soluble vitamins as well as other essential fats that it's going to be really hard to get in other foods. And so this egg yolk is loaded with retinol, vitamin A, vitamin E. It has vitamin D. It has vitamin K. It has omega-3 fatty acids. And all of these vitamins are going to be able to be absorbed into the skin. Not to mention, it's very high in lecithin. And lecithin really helps to soften up the hands. Lecithin also is the antidote to cholesterol. So it helps to break down cholesterol too. And then we have choline, which is, is another good um, nutrient that can help act as a bile salt, actually, and help to dissolve some of these other key fat soluble nutrients so it can go right into your skin. So we get a little bowl, take one egg yolk, put it into the bowl. Then you're going to take one teaspoon or 14 grams of raw honey, preferably Manuka honey. And you're going to put that in the bowl too. And you're going to just mix it around. Now, Manuka honey is antibacterial, antiviral, antifungal. It's great for wound healing. It's great as an anti-inflammatory. It's wonderful for your skin. Plus the sugar in the honey actually feeds the microbes. And this application that you're going to mix up and use on your hands, um, I only recommend using it like twice a week because 
you don't want to make sugar junkies out of these microbes and feed them too much sugar. But one strategy for farming is to add some type of molasses or something into the soil so these microbes can live because microbes do eat carbs. Microbes are not on the ketogenic diet. All right, so now the last ingredient is two tablespoons or 26 grams of extra virgin olive oil. Make sure you get the real stuff, okay? Not the fake stuff. I've done videos on that. If you haven't seen that video, I put it down in the description. All right, so we have the egg yolk, the honey, and the olive oil. All right, so you mix it all up really, really good. And then you apply it to your hands, okay? For 20 minutes. Don't wash your hands right away. Let it soak in, okay? Let it heal. Let it feed the microbes and reestablish some of these microbes. And then after 20 minutes, just rinse your hands off. You're going to find that your hands are extremely soft and they feel really good. And I recommend doing it right before you go to bed. So that way, all night long, you're not washing your hands. You're just allowing them to heal. And I would recommend doing this two times a week. All right. So now that you have that remedy, the next video I'm going to recommend has to do with anti-aging and looking youthful. If you haven't seen that video, you definitely need to check it out. I put it up right here.